everyone, my name is Heather and I'm the person behind Happy Puppy Truffles. Today I thought I'd share with you guys a little bit about my life uh, so that you, if you're curious and want to know about me, then I'll tell you. <laughs> um, I was born and raised in Aurora, Colorado um, and I lived there my entire life until I got married and moved to Japan. So uh, 20 years in the same place there. Um, I uh, grew up there in a, in a house with my parents and my younger brother. Um, my dad was a high school teacher, a middle school and then high school teacher of physics, and my mother was a, a preschool teacher. So big difference of those two things. And because I uh, grew up in a family of teachers, we had really nice long vacations for the summer, which was awesome. So. Um, I grew up there in Colorado and my mom's family was actually in, in Colorado, so I saw my grandma and grandpa uh, there. They were a little bit older though in terms of grandmas and grandpas and so they uh, passed away when I was fairly young still. Um, my brother is two years younger than me. Uh, we got along pretty all right. No, he's cool. <laughs> if you're watching, dude. <laughs> and um, we, uh, you know, had that kind of life experience there in Colorado and then my dad was actually from Minnesota from a small town called Winnebago and we would then spend those long summer vacations where my parents didn't have to work we'd go back and see my grandparents in Winnebago so um, and my my grandfather there was a farmer he raised um, livestock uh, most of the time that I knew him he raised sheep but uh, he'd also been big in raising probably pigs were probably his bigger thing um, and he did a few cows here and there but um, when we'd go you know uh, we'd usually just miss the sheep shearing season I think we got to see it once because um, I remember getting you know a, a tail a sheep tail they're really long when they're born lots of long tails and getting that as like a sort of like a good luck charm sort of like a rabbit's foot if you would um, but then uh, you know, we'd, we'd help, help out with uh, baling hay and uh, those kinds of things. And my grandmother taught me how to sew and cook and those kinds of things when I was there. Uh, so as I got older, you know, they're like, oh, you're a girl, so you have to stay inside. And that was kind of not fun. But <laughs> so it was it was a great part of my growing up, though, getting to be there for sure. And um we were the youngest of all my cousins, and so everybody was really nice and always hung out with us and played with us. So we had a good time when we were there. And they make fun of us because we talked so fast and we were from the city, you know, so <laughs> it's kind of cool. I liked going there a lot. So, um, and then I, uh, you know, graduated through high school there in Aurora as well and uh, decided to go to college at, at the University of Denver. Um, I liked all the subjects I took at school and it was hard to choose what I wanted to do. Um, I changed my mind a lot throughout all of high school, uh, but by the time I graduated I thought I really wanted to study art history and um, so I went to the University of Denver and I majored in art history. And I also had double major and studied in cultural and critical studies. Um, and it was a really fun time and I enjoyed it a lot and I was kind of thinking that my plan was to work at a museum and I, I was already working at a museum with our education program and worked there on weekends doing um, you know hands-on experiences with the public about artwork and stuff and really having a good time with that so I was sort of on that track you know figured that I'd probably go on and get my master's and possibly my doctorate and uh, either become a professor and or work at a museum. So that was sort of what I was thinking of doing. And then my um, junior year of college, I happened to meet my husband online and we decided to get married and we decided to move to Japan. So, um, you know, I moved here and tried to pick up Japanese a little bit. I'd never studied Japanese at all. Um, I had actually the only thing close to Japan and Japanese culture was that the things I did at the art museum 
were uh, for the for the Japan sort of area of, of art. I learned the Japanese tea ceremony and I learned about samurai swords. So I could do the tea ceremony and I could take apart a samurai sword. That was cool. <laughs> but I don't, I've never used those skills since I've been here. So, and I've lived here for over 20 years. So, but uh, I did not speak the language at all. So I came here and tried to learn it. Um, it was a little hard at first because uh, my husband and his entire family is fluent in English. So uh, they spoke English to me most of the time. Uh, then about three years into it, uh, my father-in-law came over one day and said, you know, Today, I'm not speaking English to you anymore. You're gonna to have to learn Japanese. So I uh, just started you know, watching TV shows and kind of pathetically tried a little to study. And I picked up uh, how to write in katakana and hiragana. If you're familiar with the Japanese language, you know that there's three different things, ways that you can write things. There's the, the Japanese kanji characters that are, are very much exactly like Chinese uh, you know, characters. And then the other things that are added to that that help with the grammar. There's hiragana for that, and then katakana is used for, for foreign words. So I, I could do those two, and a couple of kanji that I can kind of do now. I can write and copy things pretty good and make it look like I know what I'm doing, but I have no idea what I'm writing down. So <laughs> um, I've lived here now for over 20 years, and um, during that time, you know, I, I've picked up to speak Japanese fairly well, just through experience and immersion, not through any grave effort on my own. And, um, you know, there were times when it was a little scary to be here and not know the language. I uh, got pneumonia after I went to America for a trip and being hospitalized at, at that time and I did not know Japanese as well as I do now. That was really hard. Um, and, uh, you know, I didn't like that much. It was kind of sucky. I was sick. I was alone. Uh, it was, yeah, this is just not a fun time. But it was only for a week and I survived. So... <laughs> By the time I had my daughters, I was feeling a lot more comfortable with Japanese. But it was still a pretty big deal to have a baby in a country using a language that you don't normally speak. Um, but everything went well, and I'll probably tell a little of their boring story of how they were born when I tell you guys their story. But that's sort of, you know, how I do what I do. I uh, The whole origami thing for this channel actually came from the fact that I loved origami when I was a kid. I uh, collected and, and did things, whatever I could get my hands on them ever since I was, you know, in third grade or so. And uh, at, that, at that time, it was pretty rare. It was pretty hard to find anything. Um, so uh, when I was ever able to get my hands on a book or any origami paper, that was a beautiful day. And so I always loved it so much. And when I got a chance knowing that I was going to be here, I got more books and got to practice more and uh, just love all the paper and everything. So uh, definitely something that I really enjoy. And um, I, uh, I did for a while when I was, before I got married and moved here, I was, uh, I studied uh, desktop publishing and I actually received a certificate in, in that from a vocational school when I was in high school. And I actually had like a job of that when I was in college. So I kind of, it wasn't like a part-time job. I actually worked full-time there. Uh, doing desktop publishing with a, uh, sp a special group of teachers who work with reading uh, in in a in a school district in Colorado. So um, I like using computers. I like using doing design, and so that kind of all fell fell into what I do. But um, yeah, so that's kind of who I am and how I got here. <laughs> I guess that's sort of a short a short end of it. Um, my family is from uh, Minnesota and from my mom's side it was from Chicago, Illinois. And um, especially my dad's side I know a whole lot about in terms of their history. Uh, my, my, my maiden name is Hanks, uh, like Tom Hanks. Uh, and we are related to Abraham Lincoln and his mother, Nancy Hanks. And I have like little proof of it on my genealogy book. But so I guess that kind of means I'm related to Tom Hanks, which would be really cool. I've never met him, but uh, we are on the same line at some point getting back there. So, um, and uh, the rest of my family came from Scotland and um, yeah, so that's sort of that history of where I was from for that. So, um, but yeah, if you guys have any you know questions or comments or anything, please feel free to let me know. And uh, thank you guys always so much for watching and I'll talk to you guys uh, soon. Thanks. Bye. <laughs>